I settled here 5th of May 75 and I saw the turtles at the seaside. Then I started talking with some friends and I said, look, we have got a lot of turtles here. I think we should protect them. So we start getting in touch with a couple of universities. We got an announcement that they were going to send us 18 students from Glasgow University Veterinary Department. Of course, we didn't know what to do, what they expected from us. But somehow we managed, and Brendan Godley came. He was the group leader, and Annette Godley. So that's how we started, really. In 1991, after having done some field work in Trinidad, in the Caribbean, through a professor at the university, we received a letter inviting students to be sent to survey Northern Cyprus for marine turtles. The letter was from Kutlai Kecho, the president of the Turtle Protection Society of Northern Cyprus. And so in collaboration with SPOT, the Society for the Protection of Turtles, and the local Department of Environment, Chevra Kurumadarezi, we started the first really detailed survey and found that there were very important populations of both loggerhead and green turtles in and around Cyprus. In Cyprus we have approximately 10% of the loggerhead and 30% of the green turtles in the entire Mediterranean nesting on the beaches. And over the last 10 years we've seen quite a dramatic rise in the number of green turtles nesting which we hope is to do with the recovery as a result of our conservation efforts. For loggerhead turtles, we haven't seen that same rise and we're concerned about the problems that might be out there for that species. The life cycle of marine turtles begins on the beach. The hatchlings run down and get to the sea and then they go out into the open ocean for about five to ten years. After which, once they're about dinner plate size, they start to move in to the nearshore environment where they grow probably for another five to ten years before migrating back to where they were born to breed. The males come back to the breeding colony and the mating happens nearby and then the females will come out probably on the same beach at least in the same area as they were born. The females will, will nest two to four times in a season and uh, then migrate back to the same foraging area we found through satellite tracking um, and then spend two to three years there before coming back again. We started with 18 English volunteers. At that time, if you had 14 us at Alagadi, if you take Alagadi as an example, we thought that it was a good number. Now we hit under 300, we say it's a bad number. The volunteers are responsible for monitoring over 40 beaches all over northern Cyprus for green and loggerhead turtle activity. We consist of a day team and a night team. At night time volunteers will spend uh, maybe six to eight hours on the beach at night, walking up and down the beach every 10 minutes, so quite a lot of walking. Uh, during this time, once they encounter a nesting female, they will watch her closely until she appears to be laying her eggs and then they'll measure her, give her tags if she needs tagging and she may be one of our research turtles so we may put a satellite transmitter on, take genetic samples for example. Once the turtle has returned to the water we will cage and mark up the nest so that we can follow it through until it hatches. During the hatching season, volunteers are also on the beach at night time, hoping to capture hatchings as they emerge from the nest so that we can weigh and measure them and get some idea of things like the incubation conditions and how they've affected the size of the hatchlings. Day work for our volunteers involves an awful lot of walking and an awful lot of driving, some of it off-road. 
The main aim of our day work is to get to as many beaches as possible, to protect as many nests as possible from predation by dogs and foxes. To do that involves walking up and down the beaches, finding nests that have been laid the previous night or perhaps the previous two nights, finding the actual eggs in the sand and placing a cage accurately over the nest. Then returning maybe six to eight weeks later to check that nest and ensure that the hatchlings have reached the sea safely. Undoubtedly, the most important threat to sea turtles around the world is um, accidental capture in fisheries. Um, in the past, sea turtles were harvested for meat and their shell in huge numbers and that's why they became a species of conservation concern. But now, accidental capture is the main threat. So we started looking at their strandings, the uh, turtles were washing up dead on the shore and we realised that a lot of them were getting caught up in fisheries and we launched some studies into the fishery itself and we found that, um, that of the order of about a thousand turtles were getting caught every year and that about 600 of these were dying and mostly getting caught in bottom set nets. Um, so since then we've been successful in applying for funding to the MAVA Foundation and we're now part of a Mediterranean wide project to investigate bycatch in Mediterranean fisheries and to try to develop mitigation measures for those. And some of the options that we're looking at in Cyprus are, for example, for fishermen to change their gear types or the way that they, um, they use their gears in the sea. Um, but also developing technology such as LED lights which have been found when attached to nets to reduce sea turtle bycatch significantly. We are now hosting onboard observers and uh, our observers go out together with fishermen um, and they monitor all of the fishermen's behaviour so they, we understand where the fishermen are putting their gears, um, different seasonal trends in fishing patterns um, and also the rate of uh, bycatch of threatened species such as sharks, rays and uh, marine mammals and sea turtles. The Eastern Mediterranean has a huge problem with plastic. It's an enclosed sea, the Mediterranean. There are many countries which are poor and have had a lot of problems over the last 50 years and where waste management wasn't the highest priority. So a lot, a lot, a lot of rubbish ends up in the sea. The three main ways plastics can harm sea turtles is that they can ingest it and it can cause blockages or damage or dietary dilution or perhaps contaminants. They can become entangled in some of it or the nesting habitats can be degraded either for nesting or impede hatchlings emerging through the sand and running to the beach. So over the course of 26 years we've seen massive changes in Cyprus. Um, there's been a great deal of development but uh, thankfully because we were here before the development began we were able to isolate the most important beaches and they have all been protected from uh, insensitive development but also the level of awareness regarding sea turtles is extremely extremely high now in fact mobile phone companies the, and many other organizations use turtles as their logo and so it's very clear that North Cyprus knows there are turtles here and is keen to look after them.